Hello, my name is Tobias Dini from the University of Hohenheim and I'm absolutely excited that I can begin this theme session on open science in communication. Um, I will talk about um, why we need uh, open science in communication. I will talk about the question, what's the problem? And one thing that's really important to me and to all of us is that although we do talk about problems, um, we would like to do this from a positive perspective. This is really not about criticizing individual researchers. Instead, this is about improving the research that we're doing so that we can arrive at uh, conclusions that are more robust. Okay, so you might, what's the problem? Uh, in 2012, there started something called the replication crisis in psychology. It was found out that large parts of the empirical literature could not be replicated by, others, by other researchers. And this is, of course, bad because uh, replication, replicability is the bedrock of at least empirical quantitative approaches in science. It means that um, if two researchers use the exact same methods, arrive at different conclusions, which in the end means that the conclusions aren't that robust and that reliable. So this is a problem. But interestingly, we did not talk about this in communication. I'm a trained psychologist. And therefore, I've heard about the replication crisis from the very beginning. But since I started my PhD, I work in communication. I identify as a communication scholar. I've been to all ICAs. And interestingly, we just did not talk about the replication crisis in communication. So I was surprised. And I know that others shared this surprise. Um, and so at last year, at last year's ICA, a group of scholars got together and we thought, well, now, this has to end. We need to address this in communication as well. And that's when the work on the agenda for open science and communication started. Okay, so, but what is the problem? We identify at least, uh, we identify four aspects that we think are problematic and that reduce replicability. And the first one are so-called questionable research practices, QRPs. And the first one is harking, hypothesizing after results are known. Normally, what we are supposed to do in deductive um, hypothesis-based research is that we form a hypothesis, then we collect the data, we see what the data shows, and then we report our results independent from the results. But oftentimes that's not the case. Of course, we do have a certain idea about what we would what we think should come out, we collect the data, we analyze the data, and only afterward we um, then state our hypotheses. So we first write our um, results parts and then we write the introduction parts in the, in the paper. But of course, doing this is really problematic because this is just the wrong approach towards science and hypothesis-based research. Um, and very related to this, uh, what researchers are doing is we are engaging in so-called p-hacking, which means that we do change the results or we do select those results that show results with an, a p-value of below 5%. And why do we do this? Because um, these results are then considered significant and it, it's a finding. How do we do this, for example, by selecting only those variables that show significance or by dropping participants or by changing our analysis strategy um, or by analyzing only subgroups? There are different ways of doing this. But why would we do this? Because we are incentivized to do so. There is a so-called publication bias. Significance results are just more likely to be published. And as a, as a result, researchers do are motivated uh, to, to do so. And um, there are other problems. The third problem that we identify is low statistical power, which means that power means that um, your probability of finding an effect that is actually there, giving your research design. And oftentimes we are interested in small effects uh, for which we would actually need large samples but we don't have these large samples, so um, the research is just underpowered. It's just like not in the position to even find statistically significant results. And fourth, um, researchers 
are humans, humans commit errors, therefore researchers also commit errors. It's just a normal thing. It's, we, should, we should expect that to happen. And it's not even bad. It, it can happen to everyone, of course. It, it does happen to all of us. But the current system is not really uh, equipped uh, and configured to account for that. Once it's published, it's out there. And we have to trust others that it's right, but we can't really prove or find out if there might be any. Just errors in the, in, in, the, in the work. Okay, so you might ask yourself, okay, the replication crisis was in psychology. There are other areas where it was found as well, but not in communication. So where's the problem? Or do we have a problem? Should we be concerned? It's correct that at this point we don't have a large-scale replication project that can show that so and so much percent of our research can be replicated or not. But there are several early warning signs, which is why we think we should be concerned and now that now is the time to act and that we don't even need such a large project to begin with. Um, because, for example, there, are, uh, there was a special issue in communication science where nine studies were tried to replicate all the studies and only two were able to really fully replicate what was found already. Um, with regard to QRPs, um, we know that um, uh, there are some studies that, that show evidence of QRPs, but we also have a lot of anecdotal evidence. We, know that others and uh, colleagues or we ourselves have engaged in one of these practices that aren't particularly perfect research. And um, also in communication, we, it's likely that we do have low statistical power. So um, typically sample sizes aren't that large. We have some better hints at that. And oftentimes we are interested in small effects like cultivation theory or, for example, media effects. And, and here we should expect to find small effects. And for these um, theories and theoretic contexts, we need large samples, which we oftentimes just don't, don't collect. And fourth, also we communication scholars, we do commit mistakes, be it in statistic context or just reporting wise. And we do find evidence of that as well. So we do think that now is the time to act. And Nick Bauman in the next video will talk about um, potential solutions to, the, um, to, to uh, low replicability. And again, I would like to stress that this, this does not imply that uh, we are doing this deliberately. I think a lot of this is just implicit about how we do research. A lot of us were also um, taught a lot of these, these practices and QRPs even and think we now that we now need to move uh, towards more other practices that are, have shown to be more robust and more reliable and so therefore it needs a concerted effort and uh, from the entire community and Nick will present how we think that might happen. <laughs>